In today's fast-paced world, Americans are busier than ever. We all only have 24 hours in a day, so balancing work, family, and personal time often means giving up time on something. Many Americans choose to put food on the back burner and prioritize convenience over nutrition, but what does this mean for our diets? Hi everyone, welcome back this week. It has been a long time, I've taken some long vacation uh, in Hong Kong and in Japan. Now today we are exploring how the busy American lifestyle affects our diet and food choices from fast food to microwave dinners uh, or the standard American diet and why the sad SAD is so sad for us. Is it our fault or is the system setting us up for failure? Let's get started. So what exactly is the standard American diet anyway, right? Unfortunately, most Americans follow the standard American diet or SAD. Now, it's packed with processed foods, fried food, red and processed meats, sugary baked goods, refined grains, sugar sweetened drinks, and dairy. Now, not all items in the SAD are bad. For instance, red meat and dairy when eaten in moderation provide provide essential nutrients for muscle and bone health. However, it's almost universally agreed that uh, heavily consumption of highly processed food and sugary snacks, food and drinks is bad. Now, some of these problems are also unique to the US. In fact, Americans eat a long list of food that is banned in other countries. Did you know that Ritz crackers, Gatorade, Wheat thins and frosted flakes are banned in countries like the United Kingdom, Japan, and parts of Europe. The reason? Well, certain ingredients they contain are considered harmful. So what are these ingredients? Let's break it down. Well, the first one is artificial dyes. Now, Skittles, Pop-Tarts, and Gatorades contain dyes like the Yellow 5 and Yellow 6 and Red 40. The European Union has banned these artificial colors after research indicated they could be harmful, particularly to young children. Now, second is trans fats. Products like Coffee Mate, uh, Ritz Crackers, and Pillsbury Biscuits contain partially hydrogenated oils, which are trans Fats. Now, these are banned in countries like Switzerland, Austria, and Denmark due to their link to heart diseases. Third is something called BHT. Now, this chemical found in wheat thins and frosted flakes is used as a preservative. It's banned in the UK and Japan because of potential health risk. Now, so if these ingredients are banned or deemed unsafe in other countries, you may ask, why does the US FDA approve them for use in food in the first place? Well, that's because of the fundamentally different approach to food regulation between the US and many other countries. Instead of banning ingredients with small unsafe data, for example, in animal studies, like many countries do, the US FDA chooses the wait and watch approach. In other words, as long as there is no solid proof of harm in human studies, the US FDA will allow the ingredients to be marketed and continuously monitored and review new data. Well, you could argue that the US FDA's approach is not bad because it's actively monitoring new data and provide guidance accordingly. But there is a flip side. Now, who is doing all the food ingredient research? Think about it. Is the food industry, right? Just like the pharmaceutical industry does its study. The only difference is that most people ignore or not paying attention to many of these food studies. And even many people in the healthcare professional uh, don't read food studies on a regular basis. Now, on top of that, the food industry spends significant amount of time lobbying Congress and federal agencies to shape dietary guidelines and food additive recommendations 
regulations. For example, companies like Nestle have invested heavily in influencing the guideline in ways that favor their products. During the 2014 and 15 period, food and beverage companies and trade associations spent over 77 million on lobbying activities directed at Congress, which included issues related to the dietary guidelines for Americans. Well, now you ask, how about food labels? The food label said it does not have trans fat. We should believe them, right? Like the original flavor Ritz cracker. The ingredient list doesn't have any trans fat. It turns out uh, you can't always rely on nutrition label on this particular snack or many alike. Some loopholes allow uh, food manufacturers to state a food product has zero trans fat even if it still contains it. That is because food products with less than half a gram per serving of trans fat can be labeled as having zero per the American Heart Association. Now, now you ask, how's that legal, right? Well, it is totally legal and the FDA actually requires that. According to the exact wording on the FDA website, if a serving contains less than 0.5 gram, the content when declared must be expressed as 0G. So what's the big deal of less than half of a gram of trans fat. Now, if a person eats that once a while, that's probably okay. But most people who like these snacks are somehow addicted to them. After months, years, and hundreds to thousands of serving, the negative impact of trans fat would likely be apparent. Now, to be honest, trans fat is everywhere in food supply, thanks to decades of loose regulations. Well, so are we destined to be sad? Now, what complicates the sad picture even more is in fact built into the American societal culture or structure. Many Americans are consistently on the go and fast food and ready-made meals have become quick solutions. And these options might save time, but they often come at a cost to our health. Fast food is typically high in calories, fat, sugars, and sodium, and all the things we should be eating less of. And did you know that today's Americans spend significantly less time preparing meals at home than in previous decades? Now, according to the USDA Department of Agriculture, the average American spends only about 30 minutes daily on food preparation and cleanup. Now, this decline is a huge shift from the past where meal preparation was a more central part of daily life. So, well, our busy schedule leads to several things. Uh, first is reliance on convenience food. And second, skipping meals or eating on the go. Uh, and also increased snacking. Well, that all lead to less home cooking and ultimately sometimes also lead to a condition called emotional eating. Now, less home cooking is a major concern of our busy lives. Cooking at home gives us control over ingredients and portion sizes, but it's often considered too time consuming. And this shift from home cooked meals leads to greater dependence on snacks processed and restaurant foods. The stress from busy schedule can also drive us into emotional eating where we seek comfort in food, often unhealthy options like sweets and fast food. This kind of eating can lead to a cycle of poor nutrition and increased stress. So how can we break from this sad cycle? Now here are some tips that worked for me when I was doing my PhD, um, spending most of the day in the lab. First is meal planning. Whenever I have downtime on the weekend or off days, I meal plan to ensure that I have healthy options ready to go for the week. Second, I also batch cook for uh, meals like uh, soups and stews that I can freeze and reheat throughout the week. Um, well, then you ask, can we cheat? Well, you can cheat sometimes uh, unless there's a specific medical condition. Generally, healthy people can occasionally indulge in some unhealthy comfort food, for instance, to satisfy yourself. Now, once or twice a month is not going to be that bad, but be careful not to over cheat though. 
Now, I'm not suggesting completely overhauling anyone's diet here. All right, let's be clear. Oftentimes, a specific diet uh, defines who we are, uh, our culture, and our identity. Now, I once told my students that, that the refrigerator of uh, immigrants like myself uh, is the last place uh, of assimilation into the American culture. I probably eat less pizza yearly than average Americans in a month. Now, it's not that I don't like the taste of pizza, it's just the that pizza is not something I crave when I want something to comfort me. Um, so, anyhow, in summary, I completely understand that not everyone has the luxury of time and money to eat as healthily as they would like. But my hope is that by providing uh, some of these information so that you could make a smarter choice next time, or on the flip side, again, make fewer bad choices when possible. Uh, one less gram of trans fat and food coloring is one less gram of potential harm, in my opinion. And that is all for this week, and I know uh, most people watching these videos, these general health videos, are my core viewers, and I thank you so, so much, all of you, and you have already subscribed. But I'm saying this anyway, if you find these tips uh, helpful, uh, give this video a thumbs up, uh, and subscribe to the channel, and share it with your friends and family. Now remember, even with a busy schedule, small changes can make a uh, big difference in your diet and your overall health in the long run. Let's not be so sad together. Is that okay? Uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, let's eat healthily and stay healthy. I hope to see you again in my next video. Take good care. Bye.